six, nine, Hello there YouTube, today we have another video and this time it's about the Voron 2.4 R2. As we promised in the last video, we have started our journey to turn this used to be vanilla printer into a beast. So let's get to what all the upgrades until now are. First upgrade we've done is changing the shroud for the hot end assembly. The one on there now is the stealth burner with all the LED lights, as you can see. The LED lights are RGB and work through the canvas and change color depending on what the printer is doing. Inside of the stealth burner is a Fetus Rapido 2 Ultra High Flow, which we will upgrade to a plus version in a later video for better flow. We also installed the canvas V1, which we will upgrade to a V1.2 in a later video as well, since the V1's shape doesn't allow to install different shroud. Installing the canvas allowed us to take away the X axis and the Y axis cable guiders which is very convenient in my opinion. I'm talking about these and these here. This way we don't need to have the, all the cables individually run from the MCU to the stealth burner. Also the placing of the X and Y axis end stops are now located here and here which is on the hot end assembly itself and the other one is on the gantry itself way in the back. We installed Clicky probe which is right here Alongside of that, we installed AutoZ, which works flawlessly after you dial it in perfectly. That way you don't need to worry about Z offset at each start of the print. I'm loving it so far. We also installed a nozzle wiper, which kind of works, but needs some tweaking. I don't think it's the way it's doing the nozzle wiping, but rather the hardware installed on it, which is a piece of PTFE tubing cut into size. We are going to try the Bamboos PTFE tubing to compare it later. We installed the CPAP entrance here and in a later video we will compare it to the regular parts cooling fan. Remember guys, too much cooling is also not a great thing. It is as bad or equals to undercooling your prints. We are going to ask our sponsor PCBWay to send us CNC machine parts for this gantry stiffness. We hope it's going to be ready for the next video. I'm talking about these on the sides. We have done some talking about the upgrades we've done to the printer. Now it's time to show it off. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com, the world's go-to supplier for premium custom circuit boards. Tell us what you need, then let us design and manufacture your PCBs to the highest level. Low print runs and 24-hour turnarounds with assembly starting from just $5. Get an instant quote and join our online community at PCBWay.com. So first thing I want to show you guys is quad gantry leveling. And when you press on that, it will take the clicky probe, attach it there, and then start doing the quad gantry leveling on each side, which is four corners. Now this is the second try, it's just trying to align it perfectly. Most of the times the second try it will take it, this time it didn't so it's going to do the third time. There we go, now place it back and ready. So the nozzle wiper is similar to the one that Bamboo Labs printers are doing, the X1 Carbon is for example doing the same way, it wipes the nozzle right before it's going to print or probe the bed most likely. So this one is going to probe, probe it and then do the camp which is going to be inside of here. So the camp installation also had to be done in order to be print bed here is 350 by 350 and when you do the bed mesh on each print it takes a long while but if you only do the camp settings which is adaptive meshing it's going to be only the part that you need to print on which works really well 
and also with the clicky probe we installed the auto z on clipper that also is really convenient it's going to always drive the auto z to perfect first layer and you set it up once and if you don't change anything in your setup you can keep it if you change something on your setup you might need to dial it back in but when you do it perfectly it's always going to be perfect unless something goes wrong when it's doing the probing on the z and then also doing the probing with your clicky probe. So when we start the print, it will home itself. We are using end stops, not, not sensorless homing here. Now it's gonna heat up the bed. and it's going to home again. Now, attaching the clicky probe, quad gantry leveling. That happens every time when you start a print. Of course, you can turn it off when you start G-code and it won't do it, but if you have the Voron 2.4, I think you might need it because otherwise you will have really lots of issues. So I think it's, it's something that it has to be in your start G-code. Now, dock it again. Homing Z. Taking back the clicky probe. And now it's going to do the camp. So it's just probing the place that it's going to print on. Docking it back. Now it's going to heat up to the print temp, which is 220 now. There's some oozing coming out of here. You can see all the uh, hot end, but I'm going to just leave it for purpose of demonstrating it. And it did not take it off. So that's the problem with this PTAB tubing we used. So now it's doing the same Z. Of this, this is the auto Z. So now it's going to go and probe the mid of the bed and calibrates the deviation between them and probes it back. I mean, docks it back. And now it's going to go there and starts to print. So the print is finished, let us check it out how good it's printed, really nice lines, I'm just trying to get close up, really, I, I am liking it, I'd, and the first layer is also crisp, really nice first layer, I think it's a success, it's a success print. So yes, it is dialed in pretty good and the printer still needs some upgrades that I want to do. So 
once those upgrades are there i think this is going to be finished but is a boron really all finished at all times i mean there's always something new that you can implement into it but this is like in my opinion like 80 percent done and like 20 percent will be in the next video so we can finish this beast up and make it as really name it a beast because it is really quiet but it roars in the printing so the printer is compared to the other ones that that you can buy like the bamboo x1 carbon or the k1 max stuff like that printers like that core xy i think this is a much better printer in the sense of quietness and modability this is basically a printer that you can completely mod but make sure you know something about clipper uh, because it's kind of complicated sometimes it's really you're gonna get stuck somewhere although the uh, voron community does tend to help you sometimes it's it's marginal little helps but they do point you at the right direction which is good enough sometimes but sometimes it's not and google is not always your friend because google can make you install stuff that's gonna brick your your stuff so you need to revert and that's not always as easy to say than to do so yeah keep that in mind but if you want to tinker around a printer i think a voron 2.4 or a trident whichever you want to go to is a nice printer to tinker around because this took a long time to get it onto this state uh, but i think it's a success i'm really happy about it So we had to stop the print at 47 millimeters per second. Look how cool this comes out of it. This is so nice. Well, the first layer looks like the flow is a bit too low because this should be fused together. But when we look at it, the first until I think flow around 37, it was fine. And then after 37, it went up. You can see the lines here. Well, even at 35, it went a bit weird here but that's why we need to install the the plus the adapter so that it becomes the extender is going to make it better and we're using just standard basic PLA keep that in mind but overall the flow is kind of nice you can see on the end it went it was leaving gaps so in the next video we will try to install this which is a CPAP uh, with this fan that's going to go on the back of the printer and this is going to go in on the other side of this hole here and from this hole you get the rest of the CPAP hose that's going to go on to your hot end uh, assembly so that's going to make it a bit better maybe yes no we don't know so we're gonna try that out in the next video and also i'm gonna change some things on the uh, acrylic on the left and the right the way it's mounting uh, we're gonna use some clips that are very convenient very easy to install which will be better than these uh, screwed on ones so that's also something to to look forward to in the next video 
uh anyways guys i hope you liked this video hit the thumbs up if you liked the video hit the thumbs down if you didn't like the video subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content like this in the future bye